Okay, so a client has come to you ready for a website redesign or design project. How do you take a brand identity, an existing brand identity, and turn it into a website? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you my process from start to finish on how I translate an existing brand identity into a website. Let's get into it. So a little while ago, I did the visual identity for a conceptual project called Benji's Deli & Co. And they are a subscription food brand basically focused on creating family friendly meals, which the kids can get involved in in the kitchen, making food a whole lot more fun and accessible for families. I'm going to talk you through the process that I took in converting that visual identity into a website landing page for this imaginary client. And I just want to mention three key points when it comes to translating a visual brand into a website and the key things to keep in mind. Number one is you have to keep in mind the audience at all times. Half of translating a visual identity into a website is making sure that that language or those visuals or everything from copy to which pictures you choose to put on the website need to connect with the audience. You want to make sure that you're gathering as much information about the audience and the people who are going to be using the site as possible. The second biggest piece of advice is to keep in mind the brand. It should go without saying, but it's actually quite difficult sometimes to take a logo design and turn it into something that includes font systems, color hierarchy, image choice, all of those things. So if you're in the position where a client has come to you with very little assets, then what you really want to focus in on is making sure that you've got a defined color palette for the website, making sure that you've got two or three primary fonts that you're going to be using, and then obviously making sure that you've got as close as possible on brand imagery to use, or at least graphic assets like illustrations, iconography, and things like that. And the last, but probably the most important thing when it comes to designing a website for a brand and translating identity, it's going to be your content. Now, as a designer, this might be incredibly frustrating because not all of us as designers are writers and it can be really frustrating in that design process. I'm sure if you've designed a website, you know that one of the most challenging aspects of this process is actually receiving content from your clients. So there's two key ways to solve this problem. You can outsource it to a professional content writer who comes in early on in the process so that you've got defined content to work with. You don't really have to worry about it. Or you can learn how to write it yourself and actually produce the content for your clients. And I tend to gravitate towards that option. I trained early on as a writer as well. And so I actually produce for the most part when I'm dealing with smaller clients, I produce their content for them and then obviously allow them to have input on what exactly needs to be said on the site. With all of that being said, let's jump straight into the first part of the process. And this is the wireframing. So in the wireframing process, I usually start out with a pen and a notepad and I'm going to basically just start planning out which sections I want. Usually for a full website design, I'll spend a day or two doing this for all of the different pages and I'll actually come up with multiple different ways of laying out content. I'm not really even thinking about content at this stage or even being too finicky about layout. All I want to know is, okay, my page is going to be structured as follows from start to finish. It's going to need a hero section. I want to include FAQ. I want to make sure that there's a slider or something like that roughly. So let's go and have a look at my wireframing process. Okay, so we're here in the wireframing phase and, and really when I set up an XD artboard, I'm always using the 1920 artboard. I don't really know where this started, but I basically always design with like the largest screen available because the developer that I work with to build websites on Webflow, we use the wizardry method to do this. And so it just translates really well because we use EMs and REMs as our measurement device. So when I set things up, you know, I'm not too worried about pixels and things like that, but I always like designing for the biggest screen available um, because it, it's much easier to then compress the design down than it is to try and create a version of the site for bigger screens. So I always start with the largest artboard and what I usually do is set myself up with a custom grid 
by uh, converting the grid into one panel and then I usually just decide how much space I want on the left and right when going through that. And then I usually just set up my gutters again, turn my columns back into 12 and then set up at least like a 30 pixel column in between. It just, it in my years of designing websites, this just works really well for me. And then I usually finesse the spacing when it comes to the development side of things. But this usually just gives us a really nice base to work off of. Um, so what I'm doing here is just referencing the wireframes and then going in and adding in the text. And I usually, honestly, when I start out, I will do a wireframe without any content at all, because what I'm doing is it's a bit of a visual layout thing. I'm working out, you know, okay, how big do I want these headings? You know, what do I want to structure the sections as? And I'm really just laying these out with, um, placeholder text at this stage. And Adobe XD has got a really great plugin for this. It's literally called Laura Mipsum and you can really just add um, a whole bunch of placeholder text which I find really useful in my design process. So here I'm doing what you could pretty much call a high fidelity wireframe where I'm using you know f basic fonts and structure. I'm not adding any color but I'm planning out how I want the sections to look, roughly what I want the layout to look like and how I want to use my grid. I'm then going to build out all the rest of the sections as well using the same philosophy. I'll probably add illustrations and iconography here as well. I know from the brand suite that we've got some really cool illustrations to use. Um, so I know that I've got a lot of flexibility here. So what I'm doing here now is I just realized that I wanted to quickly have a look at what the other hero section layouts might look like before I went too far on with the page. So now I'm just building out the rest of the sections and you can really see that I'm just, I'm using my grid, but I'm not, you know, I'm not measuring everything exactly. But what I will do is in the final design phase is I'll actually refine the spacing and check the layout and make sure that you know my top and bottom padding is all correct the margins are correct this app that I'm using here is called icons for design through adobe xd and it's really great it's got a lot of very versatile icons and I really like just pulling them all in and just using them in the design this is really where I'm starting to think out that some general functionality arrows usually indicate a slider of some kind. You can also see that I've started playing with type hierarchy here. So I've got myself a main heading. I've got myself a supporting heading. I've got a large body text, a smaller body text, you know, button text, etc. Usually when you're working with an existing brand, they will give you a guideline on what fonts are supposed to be used where. Um, and then obviously you want to follow that as closely as possible. But I do think that there is room for flexibility sometimes with web design specifically. You know, sometimes print application doesn't work as well for web. So you do want to keep that in mind and make sure that you're chatting that through with your client at all times because they are really the ambassadors of the brand and, and need to be happy with how you're applying the various items, but we'll get to that in the design phase. What you can see here is I just wanted to create the third version of the hero section. So I've just copied and pasted the page and this option is gonna go for a burger menu, which is gonna go in the top right corner. So it's a slightly different approach to design, much the same hierarchy in terms of information. So now I'm just checking the layouts, making sure I'm happy with all my sections. And then pretty much we're gonna send these off to the client. But now we don't have a real client, so what we'll do is we'll just make an assumption about which one they'll choose and the next phase is applying the design choosing a color palette working out the hierarchy of the fonts and bringing this wireframe to life moving into the design phase of this project i'm really going to focus on two main things i'm going to be focusing on how to convey the brand properly on this web page and then of course just making sure that we're connecting to the audience and keeping them in mind and the kind of look and feel that they might be attracted to we're obviously conveying a very specific message with our web page designs and we need to keep in mind that this is really where brands come to life is online. Usually when I'm designing websites, I, I must be honest, I don't have a fixed process for what I do first versus what I do second, but I usually start with color 
and then I start applying fonts and this is really where I start getting the feel for the site and I start getting the energy right and I start looking at how I want to do things but the other thing that you can really do is with things like buttons and iconography they are the most I find that they're the most underrated way of adding personality to a website and I really like giving careful thought to how I want to treat things like buttons and illustrations and icons because in my experience with web design they are the most simple ways of adding that character to a design. So for Benji's website because we're going for a fun light-hearted and playful look and we really want the brand to be very friendly and approachable I have opted for rounded buttons because I just think that they look a lot more playful and you can add a really cool animation style to them when you start building the website out. And then you can see here that I'm, I'm really starting to build in the fonts. And as I'm working, I'm just giving careful thought to what I want to do in terms of styling and color application. Currently, I'm just saving in some styles, which makes updating things a lot quicker and easier. I'm also, you know, adding some basic styling to my buttons and actually turning them into a component so I can just copy and paste. One of the most useful things I've found when I'm working with web design, especially in Adobe XD, which I've now been using for a couple of years, so I'm, I'm very familiar with it, is using these cool plugins either for placeholder text like Laura Mipsum or actually these profile images. I find this, you know, there's a couple of different types of plugins where they give the option to select your shapes and then you go in and choose a bunch of images and they pull them in from stock websites like Unsplash and Pixels, etc. You can see in the background there that it gives you the option to choose. The whole process for me is, is very backwards and forwards because as I'm going, um, I'm coming up with new ways of communicating the brand. And one of those key ways is by adding icons, like I said. So what I'm doing here is I'm just jumping into Illustrator. I'm grabbing my pencil tool and I'm drawing a little asset, which I'm going to use for the testimonial section. And I've gone for a little hand-drawn heart and I'm just going to pull that straight in and resize and restructure and this adds immediately a little bit of personality to the design. Now obviously not every brand is going to suit hand-drawn stuff but whether you're creating more structured icons or assets or whether you're purchasing them or downloading them from the internet or hiring somebody to do them for you any which way that you can add something custom to the design of the site I would recommend you do that because this is one of the easiest ways to make things feel on brand. So what I'm doing here is also replacing the check marks or the icons or bullet points with a custom illustration. And then I'm pulling in the brand assets. Obviously, if you've been given a brand identity and you've got things like stamps and stickers and patterns, you want to include those on the web design. They don't just have to be for packaging or you know, brand collateral, use them on the website. I've got a really good feel for this brand. And so what I'm doing is I'm now going to update some of the content based on what I know the brand looks and sounds like. So what I'm doing here is I'm just bringing in a sign up form because I remembered from the brand strategy that they wanted to grow a mailing list. And you can see that I'm applying the same design to the form. I'm gone for these little round fields. Now I'm going to jump into Pixels, which is one of my favorite places to find stock images. Unsplash as well is really good because obviously for this brand, I don't have official photography. So if you're in that stage where you're trying to gather example photography for your client to show them what kinds of things they need to shoot, then this is a great place to find temporary content like this. I'm then going to move into doing the footer and one of my biggest pieces of advice for you designers out there doing websites, please do not ignore your footers. They are the last thing your clients or the viewers are going to see on the website and if you abandon it and leave it and do something really bad, then you really do leave a sour taste in people's mouths and I find that a footer is one of my favorite ways to finish up a website, do it really beautifully 
and make sure that it actually looks good. So now that I've got that footer designed and I'm more or less happy with it, I'm going to go in and just have a look at the rest of the page and see how I feel about adding in a couple of extra bits and pieces here and there. And I sort of had this idea to start enlarging some of the illustrations and pushing them into the background. And I really liked that this added a bit of layering and started feeling really complete and started finishing up the design nicely. Basically, I'm just now going back into the design and refining everything. I want to make sure that the layout is well balanced and then started realizing you know I'm gonna actually play with some live content so I go ahead and add in some FAQs and I start updating the content with what would be technically real content just so that I can see if I can add a bit more personality to the design. So now that we've wrapped up design and assuming that we've gone through a couple of revision rounds with the clients, we've now landed on a homepage design that we're all happy with. So as you can see, I'm just gonna take you through the design now and just summarize some of the key thoughts so that we can round things off. So having a look here, what we ended up with is, I wanted to keep in mind that we wanted a notification bar for the client. Usually on a website like this, they're gonna be doing a lot of promotions. And so I wanted to make sure that we had something that they can customize later on, where they can announce some of the key things that they've been doing as a company. Then of course we have our navigation bar with our logo front and center, and we've got some of the key pages that we'd probably include, and then an option to log into my account or sign up obviously. Then we've got our hero section, which has got some of the basics of a really great hero section, obviously a benefit statement. We then explain how we do it. So fun, easy recipes you will love to cook and your kids will gobble down, delivered weekly straight to your door. So that gives me an idea of what I'm looking at. And then I'm gonna go straight to pricing plans. I wanna know how much it costs. Then I'm going to back up my statement with a testimonial from a very happy customer and basically share with the world why it's working. And then I'm really using the brand assets to convey that sense of playfulness and fun for the Benji's brand. So I've opted for a fairly unconventional option here where I haven't gone for one illustration or an image or a background image. I've gone for something that's very on brand for the client and having had a look at their sort of creative presentation and having a look at how the packaging has been designed. I know that they've got big blocks of color and then they use the illustrations to support the design as opposed to an overwhelming like photographic approach. Then we've obviously got some benefit statements over here with a bit more context. We're using the icons again to create that playful and engaging feel what's inside and then we've got our custom bullet points, our custom slider arrows and our illustrations in the background. Then they can scroll through the recipes that are on or available for this week or what's being cooked and delivered to the various households this week. Got a bit more of the brand coming in with our stickers, our custom illustration for our testimonial section decided to outline the little images so that they look a bit more playful. This is something creatively that could come through on social media, etc., cetera, um, and something that could be really fun for stickers or badges or something like that going forward. So this is just how we're adding brand with a bit of extra color as well, another brand badge, some more images, happy kids, happy food. It's healthy, it looks delicious. Um, so really kind of conveying that colorful, playful feel again for the brand and then a really uh, strong footer, just finalizing the site's design with a nice anchor. So that pretty much wraps it up. If you've got any questions about how to tackle designing a website and making it feel on brand to match an identity, do let us know in the comments and we'll get back to you with our tips and tricks. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.